appreciate everybody being here with us today. We are going to uh, do things a little bit differently. Uh, we are going to have sort of page one and page two to this sermon. Uh, the message has been that we have on our heart and mind today. And so we're going to start out in Hebrews chapter 11. In Hebrews chapter 11, uh, we're going to take up the theme of the walk of the faithful. And we've been studying the different attributes that these folks had in their lives that brought them to the place uh, where they were uh, as far as their walk with God, their journey with God, their exercise of faith as they walk with God. And so when we look at the passage of Scripture here, we find then that there are a number of individuals which are mentioned. And we're going to pick up today talking about uh, Moses, okay? And so we left off last week with uh, J Joseph, and it's interesting what is uh, said about Joseph in terms of his walk with the Lord. Uh, Joseph uh, was one who walked after God, but also one that looked forward to the time when he would find the place of permanent rest that God had made for him. He acted in faith by saying, I want you to take my bones, and when you get into the promised land, when you go there, I want you to take my bones there. And this was a looking forward to the fulfillment of the promise that God had made to the patriarchs down through the ages. And so he was looking at that. And by, in verse number 23 it says, By faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months uh, of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's uh, daughter. So there is a beginning place that we see in the life of Moses. One of the things that will stick out in our mind as we look at Moses in the next little bit is that he had an absolute understanding of the unseen God. He understood who God was even though he had never seen God. He understood the presence of God early on in his life. He understood there was a divine presence in his life that was existed early on. And his parents saw that in the fact that they just chose to disobey the king's commandment. So they had, as a family unit, as not only the mother, but the father had agreed together to hide Moses from the authorities. And there was a decree which had gone out through the Egyptians that because there were so many Egyptian, so many Jewish children being born, that those children were being put to death because they were overwhelming the Egyptians with the new birth, with the things that were going on. And so they wanted to eliminate that threat by taking all of those who were born into the Jewish household and having them killed. But instead of reporting the birth of their child, Moses' parents chose not to do that. They hid this child from the authority. And I believe that is an indicator then of the faith that they had, the thing that was going on in their life as well. And so there was a there was a process that was set in place by the parents of Moses that would find its fulfillment in the life of Moses. What we do as parents is critical to the lives of our children. We are the examples that they will follow. Our children become like us, whether we like it or not. Unfortunately, some of my father's bad habits, I have also got. 
I am my father's child. And those things that were, in, were a part of the character and the, and the thing that went on with my dad in my family are also a part of my life. And so it is with you. You are the product of your upbringing. You are the product of your parents. If your parents walked in faith, trusted God, believed in God, walked with God, purpose to obey God in their lives, there's a very good possibility that you will grow up within that same thing. And even if at some point you choose to walk away from that, there will be a time when God will bring that person back. The Bible teaches us, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. There's the problem. We have to train our children. And so Moses' parents, is, although it's not addressed here, did a lot of things in the life of Moses that set the stage for how God would use him throughout his lifetime. Now, Moses wasn't always true to God. But there was always the idea in his mind and in his heart that God had a declaration upon him. That as God's child, he had a responsibility before God to do the thing that God would have him do. One of the things that my grandmother used to tell me she used to look at me when I'd get, uh, when I'd get sideways with everybody. She'd say, now, Bobby, you can't do what everybody else does. The Lord has set you apart to be used by him. So you can't live like everybody else. She was always reminding me of that. Well, being a vigilant teenager, I walked right out the door and forgot all that. But now then that I'm older, I remember all of those times when she said, you can't do what you want to do because you belong to the Lord. Listen, the moment we come to know Jesus as our Savior, the minute we come to know Jesus, we become His children, His people. We do not belong to ourselves. We belong to the Lord. Lock, stock, and barrel. So when you start looking at the life of Moses, and you start looking at what's going on in his life, you have to understand then that there were some things going on in Moses' life. One of the things I think is important here is that he hid, they, they finally, after a time, took Moses, and I, I, I'm very sure that this was the direction of God, and they placed him in the bulrushes. And if you think about that, what are the probabilities that a child could live in an Egyptian place where they were looking for young, fresh-born children to kill, that they, would, that they would stay alive for three months, that they would be able to do that in the first place. In the second place, what would be the odds if that child were then placed in a, in a basket and placed in the bulrushes, that that child would survive in that condition? What would be the mathematical chances that at that particular juncture, not just anybody, but Pharaoh's daughter comes down to the river and looks upon that child and has compassion upon that child and takes that child as her own. What are the odds of all of that thing? Well, they're astronomical, aren't they? So when you begin to look at that, you begin to see the movement and the hand of God in the life of Moses and the things. Listen. God purposes and designs His children where nothing happens by accident. Everything that happens in your life happens for a reason to the glory of God. We sometimes miss that when we're going through a difficult period in our lives. This thing with, with Moses' parents and Moses was a life and death deal. Had Moses had been discovered, and it was discovered that Moses' parents had hid him, from the authorities, guess what? They would have all been done in. That would have been it. So there was a death sentence there. Yet the hand of God and the movement of God took that death sentence and moved it away so that he could get glory uh, from what was happening and the Holy Spirit was involved 
because all of these things that were happening were absolutely the work and hand of God at work in that life and in their lives to bring about what God wanted done. When you look at outside authorities, and I rest heavily the scriptures being the first authority and being right. We look at the scriptures and we know that everything that has been written with regard to the scriptures or anything within the scriptures are not to contradict the scriptures, but rather to support the scriptures. There have been many scholars who have done a lot of work on the life of Moses. There have been those ones who have looked at his life They've been looked at the Jew from the Jewish records and from those sort of things. And there's a few things that have come up there that I want you to recognize as we talk about the life of Moses. There are some outside resources or sources who proclaim some insight then into the life of Moses. The first one being Josephus. Now Josephus was a Hebrew historian. He was a historian who wrote down those things with regard to what was going on in the Jewish nation. And he stated that Moses was outstanding in wisdom and exceptional beauty of stature as a human being. So there was something about Moses that attracted or attached itself to you. It's interesting that Pharaoh's daughter came down and she looked at Moses and she had compassion upon him out of all of the other thousands which had been murdered. Isn't that an interesting thing? He states that Moses led a victorious expedition against the Ethiopians as the Egyptian commander-in-chief. So he had some military understanding going on in his life. Phileo credits Moses with proficiency in arithmetic, geometry, poetry, music, philosophy, astrology, and all the branches of education of that day. So Moses was a well-educated individual. He took the time to seek out and to learn the rudiments of the day. Then uh, Epromolius, who was a Hellenistic Jewish writer stated of Moses and that he was the inventor of the alphabet. And I thought that was really curious, which the Phoenicians acquired from him and then the Greeks from them. Thus, we have an alphabet today which probably started with Moses. Another writer, uh, Artabanus, another Hellenistic Jew, states Egypt owned her civilization to him. Others of the same school put Homer and Plato in his death for what, in his death, excuse me, for whatever truth and goodness their writings contain. So there's a lot going on here in this life of Moses before he comes to the place of rejecting his place in the Egyptian court. As Pharaoh's daughter's son and his only one, Moses was probably the heir to the throne in Egypt. And so he had a place of station. He had the best schooling. He had the best opportunities. He had all of those things laid at him so that he could have what he needed to do the work of God at a later time. Moses wrote most of the law, didn't he? God used him in a magnificent way. So when you start looking at the writings of Moses and you start looking at all that's going on in his life, you understand the hand of God in his life preparing him for the work that he was about to do for God even though Moses at that point may not have fully understood it. But there came a day and a time when Moses looked out and saw the world through a different set of eyes than the eyes of the Egyptian kings and the Egyptians that he had taught and learned and developed under. There was 
a change in Moses' life. Now, what am I trying to say by all of these things in page one of Moses? What I'm trying to say is this. We have things going on in our lives that we do not fully understand. Would you agree? Do you understand everything that happens in your life? Do you understand why you've chosen the spouse that you feel? I know you think you do on some level. The spouse that you have. Maybe you think that because uh, everything has worked the way that it has, that it's just been a natural flow of events. I remember when I was single, I knew I needed somebody to spend my rest of my life with. And I knew that I needed, I needed someone that would enhance the things that God had called me to do, and that would be a rare find. That would not be something that you could easily find anywhere. And so I began, I set out a list, and I began to think about, and I began to ask God to help me with the list, and I began to pray about this list. And one day, Donna called me and asked me how I was doing. No. One day, God laid Donna on my heart. And... Through a set of circumstances, Donna and I decided to go out for coffee one day, and maybe just a meal, nothing serious, just spend some time together because she was without a spouse and I was without a spouse, good time for me to get her right. And we haven't been apart since. Watch out about that coffee day. That can really get you a lot of stuff. What I'm saying is this. She has been a compliment to my ministry for many years now. Why? Because God did the orchestration. I didn't understand what was going on in my life. And she had lost her spouse that she had cared about for a great deal. And so neither of us could have probably understood and neither of us felt like we were ready for another relationship at all. And yet, God in his providence did something that neither of us understood. Now she loves me deeply, and I love her deeply, and she compliments my ministry, and she, she does more on music than I could ever have hoped to have done on my own. And all of this has come about not because of my intelligence, not because of my forthrightness, but because of the hand of God. Now listen, I don't mean to be talking about me, but I'm the only one I know about. I don't know what motivated you to choose the spouse that you have. I don't know what motivated you to live the life that you've lived, but I know this. God is in control of the life of the believer, and whatever those specifics are in your life, look at it as God's hand upon you. You are not just wandering around out there waiting for something to happen. When we come before God as Moses' parents did, and we pray and we seek God's face, God will deliver on His promises every time. Those things that happen in your life, both good and bad, are the direct result then of the hand of God and his revelation to you to have you be who you are. The Bible says that we are wonderfully and uniquely made. None of us are the same. Aren't you glad? What if we all looked alike? How many of you would like to look like me? I don't see any hand. One. <laughs> How many of you would want to look like somebody else? What if you got up in the morning and you looked in the mirror and everybody looked like me? It'd be a scary thought, wouldn't it? 
you know what? God has made you the way you are, unique in the way that you think, unique in the way that you do things, unique in the way that you approach life, unique in every sense of the word. Why? Because you are important to God. God loves you. God made you with purpose. God made you with design. God made you with a purpose and design to fulfill in your life for His own glory. And God wants to use each and every one of you, no matter where you are in life, for His glory. But you have to come to the place where you place yourself in the hand of God and let God do His work in you. Even though you may not fully understand. This is what's going on in Moses' life. He's getting the best of everything. And I'm sure he's not thinking about his Hebrew status as he's going through all of these things. He's not doing this because he's a Hebrew. He's doing this because he's a son of favor. It's a different deal, isn't it? It's a different ticket, isn't it? Isn't it funny how we view life? I was thinking about this as Terry was teaching the Sunday school lesson this morning. We tend to view life from the beginning to the end, right? Well, I began here. My birthday is, by the way, some of you have birthdays coming up in October, and I know about you. Some of you have wedding anniversaries, and I know about that too. But we talk about, we talk about where we began and all of these things that are going on in our lives, right? You know, you, I was born, I was a young child, I went to this school, I did this, I went to this college, or I chose not to go to college. I'm doing this now, I work here, I do that. I found this person, I married that person, we had children together, and boom, 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 boom. And then all of a sudden, at the end, right? See, I'm going to become old and feeble. I've already, I already told our children, I said, you guys need to make lots of money. Because when I get old and you put me in a nursing home, I'm going to cost you a lot of money because I'm going to be a true man. I'm not going to be easy to deal with. <laughs> That's the way we look at life, isn't it? But you know what God does? He looks at the end from the beginning. He sees the end of the journey. And he measures everything from our end to the beginning. Wow. What does that mean? That means that our potential fully realized at the end of our journey is a result of everything God was doing in the beginning. And you will see that in the life of Moses. It's a different mindset than we have. Listen, the thing God's doing in your life, listen, what you did yesterday doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yesterday's gone forever. We have some memories of yesterday, perhaps. But as far as God's economy is concerned, we either served God yesterday or we didn't, right? We either walked with God or we didn't. We either listened to God or we didn't. But you know, that really doesn't matter. What matters is what you do today, right? Because what you are doing is you're building your life to the end, and God is seeing your life from the end to the beginning. And somewhere in the middle, we need to meet up with God get it right. That's exactly what's going to happen in the life of Moses. You will see that as we begin to study him in the next message or so. So where are you in this process? Where are you in this period of your life? Are you starting, are you looking at life through eyes of faith or through the nasty here and now? What did I say about Joseph in the beginning? He saw his life from the end moving backwards. You know why? Because it was the eyes of faith. He looked for a city, right, whose founder and builder was God. Why? Because he knew where he was at right now was not the end. But there was an end coming and he would be present at the end. And God would play the play the record back to where he is. Don't get discouraged 
when life seems to be out of sync. Don't be too encouraged when life is going really well because it can't change. What doesn't change is our faith in the living God who directs our life from the end to the beginning. Where are you at with that? How's that working for you? Are you finding what you need in your walk of faith today? That's the important thing. To rehearse and to go back to the things that God has delivered to you up to this point in your life. Father, we have delivered your word. We have done what you've asked us to do this morning the best that we could. So Lord, I pray today that we might learn a lesson from the life of Moses and his parents as they began their journey and as you see the journey from the end to the beginning. God, help us to see your marvelous hand at work in every day in Moses' life where perhaps he was aware of it, perhaps he was not, but nevertheless there all the while. Help us to walk with you in Jesus' name. Amen.